What's up, you wonderful people? Today the sun is out and today we're going to finally talk about the E92M3 as I mentioned in my first video. Today I'm going to tell you five reasons why I bought this car and one reason why I wouldn't buy this car again. But I'll tell you about this on the go, so let's hop in the car and let's go. Reason number one, I actually don't like money, so that's why I spend it all on a high maintenance car, you know, better money on the car than in the bank. I'm just kidding. Reason number one, it's just my natural car progression. My first car was an E46 330 Ci, a coupe, dark blue, leather interior, six-speed manual. That car was lovely. I bought it from an eight-year-old man. He bought the car brand new in 2004. Till this day, I actually regret selling the car. Two years later, I bought a 200SX S14A, but that car was just danced out. It didn't even make any sense for me. After three months, I just got rid of it. After that, I bought a 350Z or a V50Z how you want to pronounce it. A supercharger kit and a real build motor. 500 horsepower to the wheels. It was just a death machine. Built by a 60 year old man. Drove the Nordschleife quite commonly. I didn't keep it long. I went back to school and got a degree in electrical engineering. After that, I actually bought this car. I own this car for about one year now. I'm not thinking about selling this car ever again. G82 CSL E46 CSL I don't know if you can see it. Where is it? And then they have E92 M3 CRT. Oh, this is just amazing. Isn't it fun? <laughs> Reason number two, I think, is a bit of nostalgia. Since this is the last M3 coupe, probably the last M3 with a V8, and the last M3 with an NA engine, the silhouette of this car. It is just so freaking mar. I've just drove the wrong way. But, anyways, and you know, it's just the engine, it drives to 8,500 RPM. That's just, it puts a smile on your face every time you drive this car. So, we are here in beautiful Switzerland in Appenzell and we're going to drive a Schwergeibrundi. So, that's, we're driving to the foot of the Sentis mountain. So, yeah, we're going to have a beautiful scenery here and I'm really eager to show it to you. You know what I just saw on the road? It is April 2023. The new Porsche GT3 RS just drove by. This car is insane. The wing on the back is just huge. I just would love to drive that car one day or own it even. If you subscribe and like my videos, maybe someday we can buy a GT3 RS. Number three. Of course, I've got to mention the engine. For all you people that are born after 2013, well, you actually shouldn't be alone on YouTube. I'm going to mention the engine spec, but most of you will actually know. And these engines, they just sound so lovely. I mean, just listen to this.
it is a 4 liter V8 engine, last of its kind. It revs up to 8,500 RPM, has about, well, manufacturing spec says it has 420 wheel horsepower, which it doesn't have since almost every NA car doesn't reach those numbers. It's a rear wheel drive, it's a six speed manual, and this car is just your gasping generation as the E60 M5 which has a V10 that one also revs to about eight and a half thousand rpm this engine so the V10 engine from the E60 M5 is related to the Formula 1 engine of that era and this engine is also it has a lot of things in common with the E60 M5 engine with the V10 engine so that's why they all they both rev to eight and a half thousand rpm for me this was the biggest selling point for this car because of the engine and the six-speed manual well most people say well just get a double clutch it's way faster yeah well it, it, it is true it is faster but I just wanted a six-speed manual I would just want to experience the car I don't plan on tracking this car every weekend I want to track this car but I don't plan to do it every weekend so I wanted to have a, a fun cruiser for the weekend for this beautiful scenery that's why I chose the six-speed manual number four this car is 15 years old and it doesn't look like 15 years old the silhouette of this car it just to this day it looks just so modern most people don't know this car in specific actually think this car is five to six years old like their mouth really drops when you tell me yeah well this car is 15 years old it really doesn't look like it and especially my car with this color the Silverstone 2 it is so beautiful I always wanted a black BMW M car since I just I wanted to make it that full blacked out aggressive car but when I saw this color I had to get a light one and light colors actually work pretty good on the E92 on some corners from the car you can tell it is a bit outdated because the pre facelift with these rear lights they don't look really that good so I changed them to LCI rear lights and it makes the car look so much better from behind with this LED strip instead of the bulbs it has some 20 inch wheels which I don't like I actually like to have some 18 inch wheels since I am more of a function than over form type of guy otherwise this car is fully stuck reason number five we've got to talk about the driving experience don't we it is an M car it is really suitable for all day I don't know any other modern cars to be fair but if I compare it to my other older cars like the 350z or the 200sx or the e46 it is just so planted on the street like when you steer into the corner you can put it precisely where you want and the car just goes with you or if you drive a bit faster on the autobahn the car is so stable on high speeds when I first drove 250 kilometers per hour and with the six-speed manual you just feel so engaged like you can turn in go on the gas and it just just roars it is what else do you want and when you have this beautiful scenery it's just perfect for a Sunday drive isn't it so you can just drop this gear we can go at 80 you can even go in second gear Go up this mountain, it is just insane. 
why do you need a car that's rear wheel drive and is over 400 horsepower? Well, it is exactly for drive like this. With the beautiful mountains, the scenery, the warm day, tires are warm. The gas tank is almost empty. But it's just part of the game, isn't it? We all the demons we Oh, you're still here. I forgot to tell you why I won't buy an E92 again. Well, it's simple. I've written on a whiteboard since all professionals write stuff on whiteboards. Um, at the moment, the an E92 with about 100,000 kilometers or 60,000 miles is about 40,000 Swiss francs. For 4,000 Swiss francs less, you get an F82 M4. For about the same price, you get an F87 M2. And for even less money, you can get a 2020 M135i. All of these three cars are probably as fast or faster as the E92. So money-wise, it doesn't make sense to buy an E92. The only reason you will be buying an E92 is for the experience, which is a great one. Well, thank you for watching today's video and I'll see you the next time.